you find yourself lost in Irving Land. Last time, Dr. Smith was too lazy to put a fuel cell down carefully, and as a result, it exploded. Major West was trying to get it away from the chariot before it did so. Mission accomplished. I like how it doesn't occur to the medical man to run toward what's probably a medical emergency until he sees someone else do it. Hippocrates would be so proud. Don and Smith get into a shouting match and John has had enough of it. Let's sort this out right now. Will explains what happened. Smith insists it was a malfunctioning fuel cell. They tend to do that when you throw them on the ground with great force, but we're not mentioning that part. And John says, fine, then let's drop it. And now, Dr. Smith, let's, uh, let's discuss the accident at the hydroponic garden. The garden? Well, it was your responsibility this week, wasn't it? As a matter of fact, it was. But I've been so busy. Hey, you haven't had a chance to do anything about it. That's very true. I was just about to go over there, as a matter of fact, when you arrived. If you'll excuse uh, me... No, 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 no. Save yourself a walk. We don't have a farm anymore. That's just one example. Smith is terribly sorry, which doesn't get them food. Every time there's a mess like that, Smith is in the middle of it. He is not an asset to this crew. But there seems to be only one recourse left for me. I shall leave. If that noble declaration was supposed to elicit a sympathetic or admiring response, it failed. The general consensus is don't let the door hit you on the butt on your way out. Will is concerned, in fact, so are the girls and Maureen. But considering the trouble Dr. Smith has caused, it's hard to argue with the decision. Just passing through. I took the liberty of borrowing a rifle. However, if you would prefer that I ventured forth into the unknown without any protection whatsoever, I'll leave it here. Now you're more than welcome to it, Dr. Smith. You can tell by that knowing grin on John's face what he's doing. If Dr. Smith gets out there by himself and fails miserably, maybe he'll realize what he has here and become a little better member of the community. If he was one of their kids, we'd call it tough love. I doubt anybody here loves Dr. Smith, so call it tough beans. Maureen offers him some food. Thank you, but I cannot accept. What I am being forced to do, I must do alone and without aid of any kind. Except for the rifle you just mentioned, that coat you're wearing, that bedroll on your back, and everything else you're carrying. When you came on the ship, you brought the clothes on your back, nothing more. Everything else belongs to them and the ship. But it's good you're going out there without any aid of any kind. Sally forth, brave explorer! We see him at night. He's built a small fire and he's sitting there beside it, presumably contemplating the folly of a misspent youth. He's also contemplating what might be making that noise. We haven't seen the planet after dark before, at least not outside. Some interesting critters come out at night. Oh, it's just a manta ray. A what? And you never know, Doctor. If you were a better shot, that thing might be good to eat. But he's more concerned about it eating him. Despite his best efforts, he falls asleep. Next morning, he has a visitor. Hi, Dr. Smith. Oh, Will, you startled me. I brought you some breakfast. Ah, oh, that was kind of you, my boy. <sighs> but as an expert woodsman, I find no difficulty living off the land. I uh, dined very well last night. He had never had roast manta ray before, especially land manta ray. If it doesn't live in the water, does it still taste fishy? While he's uh, making sure the food doesn't go to waste, Will is checking his place out. You didn't pick too good a spot for a camp, though. I didn't? What's wrong with it? For one thing, it's downhill, and if it rains, you'll be flooded. Oh. Mmm. Regretfully, breakfast is over. What are you doing, Will? I'm getting you packed. We've got to find a new campsite. With wise guidance from a nine-year-old, Smith is off to find a better spot to call home. It's the wreck of an old spaceship. I'll bet it crashed here centuries ago. Let's go explore it. Some other time, Will. We still have to find a place for me to live, remember? Isn't that a place for you to live? I thought Dr. Smith was the old wreck. I wonder where that door leads to. There's only one way to find out. Try it.
Yes, have the child do the dangerous stuff. Smith fails at every aspect of humaning. The door won't open. They're setting up camp when Will notices something. Hey, Dr. Smith, how do I look? It does look like a hat. Smith is thinking about those fresh rolls Will brought him and wishing they had more. I wouldn't mind having something to eat myself. It fulfills whatever you wish for. I foresee trouble, especially considering how greedy Dr. Smith is. If Will is smart, he'll take the thing back to the ship and let Don wish up the parts to fix the ship. Spoiler, nobody's going to think of that. It's also a good idea to be specific when you wish for something. I sure would like some apples. or it could make lumps on your head. Smith tells Will, until we fully understand this thing, we can't tell anybody else. Will isn't sure why, but Smith has a way with him. As I said before, Will believes the best about everybody, even after Smith has betrayed him time after time. Maureen is the same way. She feels compassion for him. As a Christian, compassion is important to me, but sadly, it's possible to be too compassionate for your own good. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, don't let it happen again, dear. Here, you can help yourself. Thanks, but I'm not very hungry. He's sick. Maybe he's, uh... Maybe he's full of apples. Will comes clean about everything. We see that Smith is using it carefully and only for the necessities. with the possible exception of a roof. Will explains that he had to tell his parents everything. Smith says, no harm done. What about a piece of delicious French pastry? Can't make up your mind? I was just thinking about Penny and Judy and everyone else. So? It wouldn't be fair for me to have cake when they couldn't. A noble gesture, but hardly realistic. Will is about to get a hard lesson in who Dr. Smith is. You know, Will, I've missed you. It's been very lonely here without you. You could have come to see me. I've been banished, remember? Is that the only reason you stayed away? I don't quite follow you, my boy. You said all you wanted to do was check out the machine. That's exactly what I've been doing. For four days? Look around you, Will. Look at what you're holding. Doesn't look much like science, does it? There are certain problems. But as soon as they're ironed out... When will that be? Uh, eventually, my boy, eventually. What you really mean is never, don't you, sir? I like how polite Will is. You're a selfish piece of human garbage, sir. Don said now that you had the machine, you didn't need us anymore. Surely you don't believe that? He said all you cared about was yourself. That's not true. Then why are you keeping the machine? I don't think I want the paster anymore. I sort of lost my appetite for it. And I'm sure the rest of the family would feel the same way. Will lost his appetite. Dr. Smith just lost Will. Living only for yourself will catch up with you. I don't care how much money or power or whatever you have. When you hit my age and beyond, you'll find yourself alone. Oh, there might be people kissing your butt and fawning over you, but when you drop dead, do you think they'll care? At the end of the day, when they're all done pretending to like you so they can get something from you, you'll have nobody but yourself for real, intimate company. And trust me, you'll be lousy company. You'll die unhappy and alone, and nobody will care. Will Dr. Smith ever learn that and change a few things? I don't remember, so we'll find out together. You still thinking about Dr. Smith? Try to forget him, Will. He's really not worth the effort. I know he was always doing things that were wrong, but underneath, I like him, that's all. A most flattering remark, will you? He's back, and he brought the machine, and he has a plan. With the aid of this incredible machine, I'm going to create another complete Jupiter II, which will carry us safely through the heavens and back to Earth. Can it handle a job that big? <laughs> Thank you.
I guess you didn't think big enough. Apparently, the machine's capacity is limited. However, let us all remember, good things come in small packages. At least Will and Penny have a new toy to play with. Wish up the parts and tools to fix the existing Jupiter II. They've examined the machine, and even the robot can't figure out how it works. It might as well be magic. Well, did you find out anything? Only how abysmally ignorant we are. Well, uh, if you've finished with the machine, I'd like to borrow it. I want to wish up something uh, extra special for supper. And so it begins. Before the machine, she'd make supper. Now she'll just wish for it. But there's a catch. Well, for some reason, the Aladdin's lamp, as Penny called it, functions only twice a day. Oh, really? I, I thought it could be used over and over. Aren't two miracles a day sufficient? As we'll find out, no, they aren't. Don is working on the chariot, but Judy wished herself up a sexy dress, and now she's taking him for a walk, which means the chariot isn't getting fixed. It was Judy's turn yesterday, and it's mine today. All you want is some goofy tape recorder, and all you want is some tape recorder. Aren't two miracles a day enough? Once you can get anything you want, it's never enough. Now we, now we both can't use the machine, so why don't we let Dad decide? All right by me. Well, you go ask him. I'll be right back. And don't you go anywhere. Oh, don't worry, I won't. Oh, Will, you're not. He is. Sure enough, as quick as he's gone, she wishes herself up some new music tapes. Penny just betrayed her little brother's trust. She tricked me. Just as soon as I left, she used the thought machine. And you think that Penny should be punished for this outrage? I sure do. Maybe she should lose her turn a couple of times. That would teach her a good lesson. Well, that sounds like a good idea, Will, but uh, there's just one thing wrong with it. It'd more than likely be a fight among the family for who gets Penny's turns. It's doing what most easy magic does, turning them against each other. Come here, Penny. I'm very disappointed in you. You've sacrificed your moral principles for something material. You lost far more than you gained. But Penny isn't the only one whose principles are being compromised by this thing. I, I suppose you've uh, put the new repressor on the chariot. Well, I... It was my fault. I asked Don to take me for a walk. Well, you were supposed to be working in the hydroponic garden. And Will. Weren't you supposed to be helping Don? It's made them all lazy and greedy. When you can get anything you want just by thinking about it, why work? Up to now, this family's been getting along very well. We have respect and love for one another. And you cannot wish for those things with that. I suppose you could try, but I'm not sure how well it would work. It's time for this thing to go. He gives it to Dr. Smith and says, destroy it or I will. Smith says, I'm not going to destroy it, but I will take it back to the shipwreck. He wants to take the robot, but John says, no. You want a servant? Have your machine make one. I'd like a servant to bring me some coffee. Why are you still blinking? You heard my command? I'd like a servant to bring me some coffee. I guess he decided that was a good idea, but he's never tried making something alive like this before. It doesn't seem like a good idea. That door you couldn't open? That was where they mummified the pilot. You just woke him, and apparently he's going to serve your coffee. You may serve me now. I said you may serve me now. How dare you disobey? Don't forget, I created you. I am the master, and you are the servant. Or not. It starts coming after him, saying the same thing over and over. You want the machine? Smith grabs the machine and hightails it to the ship, where everyone is discovering that the machine does have a price. Mother, look at me. This is the dress I got from Dr. Smith's machine. Oh, Judy. Another thing from the thought machine gone bad. And Penny's new tapes. 
they won't play either. The stuff it gives is temporary. That fruit on the table is covered in mold and it happened in less than an hour. John says it was his experience that you never get something for nothing. He's right. And now the machine's owner is awake and angry, thanks as always to Dr. Smith. For now, the force field is keeping him away from the ship. What happened to the thought machine? It's hidden in a safe place. Smith, I want you to give the alien what it wants. I will not. The machine is mine and I intend to keep it. Very well, Dr. Smith. Don, turn off the force field. Right. Oh. That alien has no quarrel with us. His arguments with you, so I suggest that you settle it. Under duress, Smith agrees to lead them to the machine right now. The mummy seems to have given up and gone away. At least they didn't give Smith a gun this time. Maureen sees the mummy following, but it would seem they also didn't take a radio, so she can't tell them. Everybody in the universe seems to know how to do that except us. I hear Debbie is working on mastering it at this very moment. They retrieve the machine and take it to the derelict ship where the mummy is likely to find it. Look at this. He's here. Very likely. Time to give him the machine. Smith is amazed the alien didn't kill him. Why should he? All he wanted was the machine. He has it. And all that ridiculous opulence Smith gave himself. Dad, I don't understand. Why did the alien give us things and then decide to take them back? Because Dr. Smith asked for too much. You know, he could have had anything he wanted. But like most people, it wasn't enough. He wanted more. When he tried to create a slave, the alien realized this. Of course, it's all the alien's fault. Never Dr. Smith's. He would have stayed, Doctor. We made him leave because we were selfish. He must have really heard me. Either that, or it wasn't hard to tell who the unselfish members of the group are. I guess it's roast land manta ray for supper again tonight. For our cliffhanger, Will is sending small rockets into space in random directions, hoping someone out there will find one and understand the message he's put in them. It's like a stranded sailor putting a message in a bottle. A small balloon will take the rocket up to a thousand feet, then the rocket engines will kick in and off it'll go. He's already sent several up and this one is ready to go. Dad and Penny are on hand to watch. Warning, it's coming this way. It's coming this way! Space probe out of control. I'm sure none of us needed that lesson on greed, but we all know someone who does. Better go find them and make them watch this episode. Multiple times. Make them keep watching until the next time you find yourself lost in Irvingland.